Well, good morning, Hillcrest. Um, wanted today to continue looking, particularly in Genesis chapter 15, uh, God's interactions, his uh, promises to Abraham. We saw earlier this week, uh, God made the, uh, continue with the promise, fear not, um, promise to be Abraham's shield and his reward. Um, and then this morning, I just wanted to look at the comments that are, the response really uh, that Abraham gives um, and then the ongoing conversation a little bit, uh, just looking at verses two through six of chapter 15. And um, so in verse two, but Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, you had given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir, your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. So a couple of things are important here in our passage this morning. First of all, we see Abraham's response, and it is, uh, we could say, a logical response. It's not a very nice response, given everything that God has already done and promised, but, but it certainly is a reasonable or a rational one. He says, okay, wait a minute, you're promising me offspring, you're promising me um, the shield, you're saying um, there's going to be a great reward in all of this for me, um, and yet I continue to not have children. Uh, he continues childless. Uh, so clearly there is uh, you know, the effort made uh, to have children, and um, his wife continues to be barren. He continues to have no heir, and the closest thing he has is Eliezer of Damascus, and um, not sure whether this is maybe a household slave or uh, a, a close friend who is sort of, you know, quasi adopted, so to speak, into the family. Uh, we're not told much about him at all, other than the fact that that his he's from Damascus and he's a member of Abraham's household, but he's certainly not his son. And so it, it's sort of okay. How am I to know that this is the case? Um, you know, you've made you've made these promises, and in many ways, right? Even even the idea of you know, fear not, Abram, I'm your shield, your very great reward, as we saw on Monday. Even the idea of that, um, it's easy in a certain perspective, right? It's easy for God to come along and say that great victory that you just achieved. I'm the one who really provided that for you. Uh, how do you know that's true or not, right? I mean, it, it takes faith, and we'll get to that in just a second, but but certainly uh, Abraham is like, okay, you have a opportunity to demonstrate clearly and openly the the, the fulfillment of a promise. You, you, you told me I'd have a great nation. You told me I'd have offspring. I have no children. Something doesn't seem to be fitting here. And the Lord doesn't say, oh, Abraham, you untrustworthy servant, or how dare you question me, or who are you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he says, you know, you're wrong, basically. He corrects Abraham. This man is not going to be your heir, but your son is going to be your heir, your very own son. Not, some, not, not adoption, nothing wrong with adoption, but it's not going to be through adoption. You are going to have your very own son. So he takes him outside, says, look up, number the stars. If you're able to number them, that's how many children you're going to have. And again, not immediate children. That's your offspring. That's the, the fullness of everything that's going to come forth from Abraham. And our text, uh, Genesis 15, 6, tells us uh, in, in words that are quoted numerous times in the New Testament, uh, he, that is Abraham, believed the Lord and he, that is the Lord, counted it to him, that is Abraham, as righteousness. Lots of pronouns. So Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted it to Abraham as righteousness. 
And again, this is such an important passage. It, it's brought up numerous times in the New Testament. Uh, Paul makes a great big deal out of it in Romans um, that Abraham trusts the promise that God makes. He has nothing but the promise, in, in, at least with regard to offspring, right? He has a land that he doesn't technically own because other people own it, but, but still he, he, he's been shown a land um, he has been protected, even though, again, God is telling him that, um, but he doesn't have children. And this is the primary point of the concern. This is what he says. Um, how or, um, I continue childless. We'll get to the next piece next week. Um, but I continue childless. And the Lord says, your heir will be your very own son and the offspring the, the eventual offspring that is going to come forth from you is going to be more than the stars of the sky and abraham trusts he believes um, all he has is a promise but he believes that promise and again the text tells us that god is counting that belief that faith to him as righteousness that there is a that, that Abraham's status before the Lord is on the basis of the faith that Abraham has exercised in the promises that God has made. Um, and Paul uses then Abraham as a, as a model of justification by faith, that, that Abraham is declared righteous. He's not righteous. He's counted as righteous, but there's a difference between counting something as righteous that's the language you use for something that isn't actually righteous. Uh, if, if Abraham was righteous because of faith, if faith made you actually really righteous, it would say he believed God and was therefore righteous. But it doesn't say that. It was counted or reckoned as righteous. God chose to reckon, to count, to declare Abraham righteous on the basis of the faith that Abraham is exercising in the promises of God. And again, Paul's point in this is that this is precisely what happens when we come to faith in Christ Jesus, that we believe in Christ. We believe him and we believe in him. We trust him that he has fulfilled the promises, all the promises that God has made. We believe in Christ and our faith is counted to us as righteousness and, and and one of the things we've been looking at with these promises is that we're in a different stage of sort of redemptive history is what theologians call it or a different stage of redemptive history than abraham he's very early his promises are um, sort of shadows of the things that will eventually come we live on the other side of the cross indeed the other side of, of the fulfillment the finishing of scripture, right? All of scripture is written. We have all of the promises, all of the various ways that those promises are voiced and, and how they, some of them, many of them have come to pass. I mean, certainly with the coming of Christ Jesus. And then there are new and other promises in the book of Revelation and other places, uh, the Olivet Discourse in Matthew, etc., where we know that there are things happening in the future. But that means that we live in a place where we can, we still have to exercise the faith that Abraham demonstrates. Um, Jesus has not returned, right? He's come for the first time for our salvation, but he has not returned uh, to bring in the new heavens and the new earth. He hasn't come back yet. We, we, we know the promise. We believe the promise. We trust in the promise. Um, we also trust that by his sacrifice on the cross on our behalf, that through faith in that, that, that we are justified. We believe that. Um, none of us hold, I mean, we hold a Bible in our hands that has those promises, but it's not, it's not like a deed to something uh, or a physical thing that we can possess. Uh, we, we have justification, we know we're justified, um, and we believe the promises that God has made regarding us. And so there is this, this ongoing um, need, desperate need for faith. And we are part of, again, Paul makes the point that we are part of the, the offspring that are being promised to, um, 
to Abraham here, and we're offspring, we're part of that by faith. We believe in the promises that God has made, and we too are reckoned righteous in Christ Jesus. So not only are these promises for Abraham that he believes and he is made righteous, but they're also part of the promises that we believe. And by our faith in the finished work of Christ Jesus and the fulfillment of the promises that God is making uh, from Genesis well, 3 anyway, all the way through the rest of the Bible, um, our, our faith is also counted by this gracious God, this marvelous, loving God. Our faith is counted as righteous as well. Let's, uh, let's return thanks to our great God. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you this morning for your marvelous love. We thank you for the promises that you have made. And we ask that you would strengthen us with those promises, that you would strengthen our faith and our trust in you. But also, Father, that you would strengthen our love for you, that we would continue to seek your face your marvelous, great work in our lives. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Talk to you again next week.